as we as a culture and society start to learn more about the benefits of things like yoga and meditation and these other practices that support mind-body connection, we are still typically told to turn outwards when it comes to eating. So that is we're told to ignore our body's internal drives for eating and instead we should be focusing on these food rules and diets. So food rules and body ideals are still more trusted in our society than our body's own innate communication. But this is harmful, not only for our relationship with food and being able to feed ourselves without the stress and guilt, but also for our sense of self, our emotional regulation, and our involvement in many areas of life. So you're listening to the Food and Life Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Emma Townsend, a UK registered dietitian and a certified intuitive eating counselor. I support you to move away from lifelong dieting, emotional eating, and other stressful eating to develop a positive relationship with food and connection with your body. And just my standard reminder that this podcast cannot provide personalized health advice. We are all unique. So please use this as an opportunity to learn and explore. But if something does not sit with you, then it's not meant for your unique self. And of course, if you have any health concerns or you're worried you have an eating disorder, please do seek the personalized support you deserve from a registered healthcare provider. So our world is full of shoulds around food and body. So many food rules that tell us that we don't know how to feed ourselves. We don't know how to eat without following some kind of food rule or diet. If you experience things like obsessive food thoughts, cravings, out of control eating, or a stressful relationship with food, you likely don't need any more knowledge about food. You've probably already got a lot and you've had so many different types of food knowledge coming at you. So rather than this, you need to connect back with your body for your body to be your number one guide. And only after developing this trust and connection with our own bodies can food knowledge then really feel supportive. So as a further tool to nourishing our bodies. So in this episode, we're going to learn what mind-body connection is, what it can tell us, and how you can improve your mind-body connection to be able to eat intuitively without stressing about food. So if you're new here, intuitive eating is an evidence-based framework to guide us back to eating naturally. So without feeling guilt, without feeling shame, and with connection to our body. Unlike other approaches to support eating, which tell you, say, what and when or how much to eat, intuitive eating doesn't have any of these food rules. And in fact, intuitive eaters eat in so many different ways. So intuitive eating does not actually describe the food eaten, but it describes the feelings that food brings up and what guides our food and eating decisions. So intuitive eating is all about developing trust with your own body to be your number one guide. And food knowledge, it may support you, but as an intuitive eater, it will not take over. And importantly, food and eating it holds no morality. So there's no good or bad mindset toward food. And then there's no guilt or shame over the food that you've eaten. A concern I often hear about this way of looking at food and eating is what about health? And intuitive eating does absolutely focus on health. In fact, it is a much more helpful approach to eating than dieting is. So intuitive eating, it firstly acknowledges that health is so much more than food and exercise. And in fact, food and exercise makes up only a tiny part of our health. While feeling stressed over food or feeling stressed over movement and our body weight, for example, this all has negative overall health implications. Of course, there's no morality over health and health it just means something different for all of us. Although intuitive eaters give up food rules and diets, they do so while developing connection with their own bodies to guide them. So eating is not just this like free for all confusing kind of place. 
And we're not just constantly craving and eating foods that don't support us and don't feel good in our bodies because one of the the main purposes of intuitive eating is to eat in a way that feels good in your body. For this body connection that separates if we're just not dieting, so we just stop food rules and then this is where food can feel really overwhelming and out of control and maybe not so good in our body. Uh, Whereas being an intuitive eater means we let go of food rules, but we also have this connection. So to get that, it's this mind-body connection is what separates these two, two areas. We might have to go through this process of giving up dieting and food feeling a bit messy to get there. But the process of developing mind-body connection really is the backbone to intuitive eating. And in fact, if you're familiar with the 10 principles of intuitive eating, they all actually work towards our mind-body connection. So they are either focused on removing obstacles to developing mind-body connection, or they're working towards actually strengthening your mind-body connection. And if you do want to learn more about intuitive eating in general or the um, 10 principles of intuitive eating in season one, I have two episodes on there. So what is intuitive eating and the 10 principles of intuitive eating. So do feel free to listen to those. So what is, what actually is our mind body connection? I know we might just kind of hear this phrase come up, but to actually explore what it is can be really helpful scientifically mind-body connection is called interoception and interoception is actually one of the senses that we have to help navigate the world so we often hear about the like the five common senses that we might hear in school are um, things like sight touch hearing taste and smell all of these senses are our senses that help us navigate our environment around us So they all help us to interact with the world outside of our body. Whereas interoception is our way of understanding what is happening inside our body. So your interoception, it's a sense that makes you aware of the sensations that arise from inside your body. And then you feel them inside your body. No one else can ever feel these sensations And this is important because when other people or like a diet or meal plan, for example, tells you what to eat, that person or that diet can never actually know what is happening inside your body in that moment. So they can never know what you need. So these sensations inside your body, you feel these through interoception. So it's your awareness of the sensations inside your body. Just like if we're to explore your sight, that would be your awareness of the things that you can see in front of you. Interoception is awareness of the sensations you feel inside your body. And these sensations are actually the language your body uses to communicate with you. So when we are understanding this language that our body uses, then we are able to to firstly notice and become aware of the sensations and also to develop trust with the communication from our body. And then we can start working together. So our conscious mind and our body can work together to get our needs met. But if we are not quite feeling or understanding this language, then we can end up in what feels like a bit of a fight between our body, so the sensations inside, and our conscious mind. Our body is trying to tell us what it needs, but then our mind is using the outside knowledge and rules instead. So then they're not agreeing. They're on different pages and speaking different languages or having different priorities maybe. These food rules and the knowledge from the outside world can never actually tell us exactly what your own unique body needs. They're usually just using kind of generic markers or they're just have intentions that aren't supportive for our body anyway so over time if we keep using these outside rules and information about food then it's not going to feel good and we can end up with a lot of stress over food and also a distrust towards our body our mind body connection so our interoception is how our body communicates to our mind the things it needs 
And it's not just food, it communicates. There's three broad areas of communication. The first is our self-care needs. So this is things like needing to pee. So the sensation of having a full bladder will indicate a need of um, needing to pee to us. Um, Things like needing rest or needing movement, needing sleep or needing connection with others or needing alone time and just other basic needs our body has. We'll feel these kind of needs through these sensations that are inside our body. Uh, The second thing that our body communicates is food and eating. So our hunger, our fullness, our satisfaction cues uh, are all different sensations that we feel in many different parts of our body actually to help us navigate eating. And the third thing that our body communicates is our emotions. So this is things such as happiness, stress, calmness, anger, like all of our emotions, the big complexity of different emotions that we have are all felt through sensations that occur inside our body. And from the research, intuitive eaters are shown to have greater interoceptive awareness than non-intuitive eaters. So that means greater awareness and trust with our body's communication or simply just better mind-body connection. And this makes sense since the backbone of intuitive eating is becoming connected with our body and mind. But this also means that intuitive eating is not only shown to help us to feel good around food, but also to feel good in our bodies, to be able to cope with our emotion because we can understand the emotion um, and aware of how this changes and we're aware of how to of what our body might need in that moment and to have overall improved satisfaction in life because our, our mind-body connection is critical to all of these things. So what stops us from having strong mind-body connection then? We are all born with an ability to navigate food and self-care and Although there can be some genetic differences, such as neurodiversity, which may naturally just change the connection we have with our body states to some extent, but we are all born with a basic ability to navigate food. And if we think about when we're a baby or we think about other babies that will cry when they're hungry, and as long as food is available frequently, it's not something that has been restricted, um, then they'll stop drinking or eating when they're full. They have this inbuilt ability to say when they're hungry and to to naturally know when they've had enough. But then we're thrown into diet culture, a world with ideals around what bodies should look like, what food we should eat, value and morality placed on our body size and physical appearance and our abilities and a judgment of food choices or food access. And just a really simplistic way of viewing food bodies and health. And diet culture is oppressive. It provides privilege to those who are closer to its ideals. Um, This privilege can include things like greater employment and pay opportunities, better medical treatment, more acceptance and just feeling included in public spaces, just to name a few. On the other hand, it takes away these basic human rights from those who are further from its really narrow body ideals. Body diversity is so, so normal, but we are taught these really narrow ideals of what we should look like and what our abilities should be. Food provides so much more than nutrients, but we are taught to feel shame over food enjoyment or for eating for emotion and connection. Health is so nuanced, diverse, and complex, but we are taught that it's all about nutrition and exercise. These messages and experiences can make us feel that our body cannot guide us, that our bodies are wrong. And the outside messages and rules about how to eat or how to move and what we should look like are more accurate and trustworthy than our own innate wisdom, than our own innate communication that that is inbuilt, um, that's designed to help us to navigate the world before we even ever knew about calorie numbers and different types of food. But actually, diet culture 
and food rules. They don't teach us to eat and care for ourselves in a way that best supports our body. Health is so much more than the actual food we eat or the exercise we do. These diets and food rules more often drive us to eat less food than our body needs, which is really unhealthy for our bodies. They make us feel stressed about food and feel uncomfortable in our bodies, which is a very unhealthy place to be. They make us hyper-focus on food and on trying to change our body. So trying to maybe lose weight, for example, and give us less headspace for fun and rewarding parts of life, which is very unhealthy. Diets or focusing on weight loss can not support us to become an intuitive eater. And this isn't to place any judgment on, on anyone who might go back to dieting after trying to learn to eat intuitively. You, you can certainly still choose to come back to intuitive eating and the knowledge or things you've learned beforehand will still be there. But they can't run parallel. Diets and rules are actively telling you what to eat or how to move in place of your own body cues. So they're telling you not to trust your body because you should do this instead. While intuitive eating, we need to, well, to learn intuitive eating, we need to actively reject these rules so that we can then tune back into what our body is actually telling us and what feels best for our body. So there is a place for food and nutrition knowledge. So this is not to say that the information that we've gained as a society, as a species about nutrition and the scientific advances in this area are just pointless and we should not ever know anything about that. That information can be really, really helpful. But as an individual, it should always come secondary to our own body knowledge. So it can be there to support us we, it can add extra value so we can trust what our own body is saying. And then maybe we have some um, particular goals that this knowledge around nutrition can help us with. Maybe it can help to kind of add value to our meals. Maybe it can help to support feeling satisfied as well, or just by helping us to, to know how to balance a meal out. Um, can then help us to feel good in our body and to feel satisfied. So whatever reason we're using the, the food knowledge for those, so the knowledge from our outside world, we can only do this once we firstly understand our own body. Otherwise, it can easily pull us away from our own body and stop us trusting our own body and then become more like a rule or something that makes us feel guilty or shame over. So before we can let this kind of knowledge in, the first step we do in intuitive eating is focusing on tuning in with our own body, developing that trust first. And for this, we need to let go of the information that we have. Um, once we've developed this trust, then we can slowly start to navigate these food and nutrition messages if that's something that's supportive for us so that we can let go of anything that isn't actually helping us, that's not feeling good. So the good news is that even if we can't ever remember having this awareness or, and or trust with our own body's communication to guide our eating, it is actually possible to rebuild our mind-body connection. So I want to share some tips with you that might help you to just, just to get started towards uh, improving your mind-body connection to support your eating. If you are experiencing stressful or emotional eating experiences and are looking for maybe a bit more than this or a bit more structured support as well, my anti-diet guide to overcoming emotional eating online course is a really great tool here. It offers, offers a step-by-step -step guide with short action-packed videos to help you identify why you experience this behavior and to build your mind-body connection, not only for navigating food, but also for navigating your emotions and your stress responses and your self-care as well. So I'll link to that in the show notes for you too. But to get started, here's four tips that you might like to try out yourself. Number one is understanding why. So you are not broken. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you or your body. 
And this is so important to note because diet culture draws us back in by telling us that we are broken and we need the diet rules to quote unquote fix us. So learning why you feel disconnected from your body can bring confidence to your body. I invite you to explore your food story. So your food story is just your food narrative and experiences that you've learned throughout your life. And this can help to give you a clearer picture of what has shaped your relationship with food. Number two is creating trust. So this means building trust with your body, but also your body building trust with you. And just like in any relationship, it's going to take time and consistency for your body to begin to trust that it's listened to again. To do this, you might like to write a letter to your body to signal maybe the beginning or the next step in a trusting relationship between your body and mind. Number three is to honor your body's needs. So when you do notice your body's communication, don't fight against it. At the very least, if you feel hungry, allow yourself to eat. So often we try to like trick our bodies by drinking coffee when we feel hungry or eating a really like low calorie food, but this will just leave us more disconnected from our body and also probably thinking about food all day. Tip number four is to try out a meditation called a body scan. So this is where you bring awareness to the sensations inside your body You can start at, say, your head and then just scan down from head to your toes. What do you feel inside your body? This body scan can just help you to bring awareness to the sensations in the different parts of your body. Often we, if we do notice anything in our body, we might just fixate on something that's like really uncomfortable or a painful sensation but this can help us to just notice all the different parts of our body and bring awareness to even the more subtle sensations that we might feel. And bringing curiosity in as you become aware of the sensations that you feel inside. If you are able, you might even like to start naming the sensation that you feel. And if it's related to an emotion, maybe you can explore what that emotion is representing. But intuitive eating, it is a really powerful evidence-based framework that supports you to stop turning back to these diets and stressful rules around food by developing this mind-body connection to guide your eating. So maybe if we've tried giving up dieting, eating just feels like this messy, free-for-all, not great feeling space. So when we give up dieting, we develop this connection with our body so that eating actually starts to feel good for our body. Being an intuitive eater just feels very different to just not dieting. And you'll understand what you need and you'll trust what you need. So then you can get what you need and find that satisfaction. If you do experience obsessive food thoughts, cravings, out of control eating, or a stressful relationship with food, it's very, very likely that you do not need more quote unquote knowledge of food, but rather you need to connect back with your body to be your number one guide. If this is you, my anti-diet guide to overcoming emotional eating is an intuitive eating online course, and it focuses specifically on reducing the stressful out of control and like really emotional eating behaviors by developing um, connection with your body to guide your eating, to guide your self-care and to guide your emotional needs as well. And to recognize and understand your nervous system states, which is a really big part of it when we're eating in a really stressful or emotionally fueled state. So it supports you through um, short videos. So they're designed to fit in with your life, not these really long things to watch uh, with lots of activities that do fit in with your life as well, just so you can stop feeling stressed around food. But wherever you are in your relationship with food and body, it really is possible to start feeling good around food by improving your mind-body connection. 
It's been so lovely to share this episode with you today. For more support and information, including articles, free resources, online courses, and individualized support, you can visit my home on the internet at foodlifefreedom.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on the podcast platform you use. And feel free to use the three dot symbol to share with anyone who may find this episode helpful. If you have a question or topic you would love to have covered on the podcast, I would love to hear from you.